have with us one of the world's most celebrated architects. Rafael Vignoli inspired designs are adding beauty and distinction to cities throughout the United States, Europe, Latin America, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Since he founded Rafael Vignoli Architects PC in 1983, he and his firm have completed such important projects as the Tokyo International Forum, the Kimmel Center for the Performing Arts in Philadelphia, the very creative Curve Theatre in Lancaster, England, and the Carcioco International Airport in Montevideo, Uruguay. Mm -hmm. He's also the master planner of such projects as New York University's Abu Dhabi campus and the Bowersea Power Station in London. I think it's safe to say that our speaker has amassed more of a share airline <coughs> flyer miles than anyone. Right here in Michigan, the home of Van Endel Institute in Grand Rapids has earned broad acclaim from not only architectural critics, but also from doctors, researchers, patients, and those who use the space every day. The Taubman Company <laughs> had the pleasure to work with Raphael on the ambitious mixed-use city center development on the Strip of Las Vegas. Even in the supercharged physical environment of Las Vegas, Raphael Vignoli created the most the must-see destination with his Vadara Hotel and Spa. Crystals at City Center, leased and managed by the Taubman Company, featured 500,000 square feet of upscale tenants, international tenants, including Tiffany, Prada, Gucci, uh, Roberto Carvelin, Louis Vuitton, and Zegna, maybe the best collection of luxury merchants ever assembled in one project. A native, native of Uruguay, Rafael was raised in Archina, Ar Ar Argentina, where he earned a Master's of Architecture degree from the University of Buenos Aires. He has earned many industry awards and honors, and is a fellow of the American Institute of Architects, the International Fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, and a member of the Japan, Japan Institute of Architects. Raphael has lectured and served as a studio critic at many universities, including Columbia, Harvard, MIT, Yale, Rhode Island School of Design, and the University of Buenos Aires, and now Lawrence Tech. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming Mr. Raphael Vignoli. Good evening. Um, thank you, Arthur, and thank you again for giving me the chance to come here tonight. I, I wasn't aware of how wonderful this school is. Uh, as uh, I think I, uh, uh, I mentioned this afternoon in a small classroom that uh, uh, Alfred is uh, giving to students here um, uh, at the school, um, I'm pretty uh, uh, capable of jumping from one place to another. And so you have to be prepared for not really be <laughs> having a very logical line of uh, thought. But, um, uh, in, in coming here, what I thought was that in, the, uh, in this conversation this afternoon, I showed what I call a case study connected to the issue of how um, you know, iconicity and the character of architecture has uh, inserted itself into the equation of real estate, I mean, where uh, falsity or rightly. And um, uh, a little bit of a description through the uh, uh, particular evolution of one project uh, in London, uh, which I, I, I think I have in this list too, 
um, uh, I, I, I conceived and somehow I sort of think about the problem of this new cultural exposure of architecture to the media and to uh, the public and um, the benefits and the risks uh, that all of that entails. Um, as uh, it was said before, I, I started uh, this office in uh, uh, 1983 after having the first life of around 18 years of practice in South America. And um, uh, from the very, very beginning, I was lucky enough to start at a very early age. I, I, uh, you know, my first building was the result of a small competition at the School of Architecture to do the, 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 um, the workshops of the school. And, um, and but I was uh, 19 when I when I started, and since then. Uh, I have always been involved in construction uh, and in, in actually the materialization of architectural thought, uh, which I think is really uh, a media um, uh, and a place where I think we all need to really come back to with as much uh, um, uh, preparation knowledge and, and ability to deal with the difficulties of the profession as, as we all collectively can. Uh, um, so there is a big, um, uh, well, not big, but there's a long history of projects uh, uh, behind these recent projects, which uh, um, perhaps I should have actually brought tonight. Um, uh, and this is always a question of how much uh, you know about uh, our firm, but. Um, I decided to just focus on the project on the projects that are really very recent. Some of them are in production, some of them are are, are under construction, and some of them are in design. Uh, because that would probably give us a chance of having a more comprehensive and lively discussion probably afterwards about how how you practice architecture with these probably um, uh, the central topic uh, here. So this is nothing other than, uh, I think it's around 16 projects that are uh, being developed now or they are very recently finished. Uh, and I would like to start with a uh, very modest but very important project uh, uh, it was for me because it's, it's the first time that I uh, um, uh, did a design for a school of architecture. And it is a renovation, it's not a new building. Uh, but we were able to sort of reinterpret the guts of the building and the basic structure of it and transform it into something which I think reflects some of the preoccupations that all of us have uh, uh, as students and as uh, faculty uh, in, in this very um, uh, uh, peculiar effort of you know, teaching something uh, which I still believe is teachable. Um, uh, the the project is a project located in the upper part of uh, of the island of Manhattan. It's in the basically it's, it's part of a city college of New York, which is the first professional school in the city, um, and it is a wonderful school, very well run, uh, with wonderful teachers, uh, uh, sort of in new competition with Colombia, and for many, many, many years uh, it has been tucked away in, in different kinds of buildings and uh, uh, I mean, in ad hoc uh, uh, um, uh, facilities. And, and this, for the first time, was the, the opportunity to build a new, uh, a new building which is, is located in this structure that uh, existed and that um, uh, it was originally a, 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 a storage for books, not even a library, but basically a, a storage for books. Um, uh, the project is uh, uh, very simple in a way. Um, it's, uh, um, it's basically uh, this central space, which uh, actually uh, didn't exist before, in which we created uh, not really an atrium, but a place of circulation, which actually 
coalesces and sort of brings together the whole community of the school in one uh, in one environment. This is the building that we uh, took it um, uh, in a rather hilly site, uh, a very difficult place to access, and this is more or less how the building um, uh, looks like now. Uh, this is unfinished because all of these demonstrations now are being provided with a uh, uh, with a movable set of uh, uh, aluminum louvers that control the solar incidence of the of the of the surface of glass of these offices. But we added circulation, and as I said before, the whole project hinges around these uh, four um, uh, uh, blocks, which actually create the central atrium. And in drawing form is essentially having vacated this place and concentrated into a series of ramps and stairs, the whole means of the vertical uh, communication between essentially two levels of studios in which um, uh, a mezzanine uh, of, uh, of offices is located for the uh, uh, for the faculty overlooking the work into the studios. And at the top of it, there is this monitor that brings light from the north, which doubles up as, a, as an outdoor room uh, uh, for lectures and, and, um, and, and classes uh, uh, when there is good weather that overlooks Manhattan for there. And I, I, I just show you some pictures. Okay. At the bottom of this atrium, there is a system of movable walls that pivot that uh, uh, could create a very large exhibition room or a series of more broken down spaces for shows and, and, and reviews. Um, but essentially, uh, the whole place is covered with circulation. There are uh, all the intermediate levels at the faculty level as well as the studios levels are, are communicated through this sort of spider that uh, feeds the studios which are being sort of set back to generate in here more light for the uh, uh, for the working areas in in the um, uh, in each of the studios the, the corridors are also increase in dimension such that all of these spaces at a certain point become uh, uh, exterior places for discussion uh, 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 exhibitions, uh, crates, and so on, and and the structure of the uh, uh, of this sort of spider moving around is uh, it, it serves also as a as a, uh, a balcony for lectures when the central space is utilized for that, and the uh, you can see at the top this el sorry this element which. Uh, uh, which actually is the uh, uh, is the bottom of that classroom. So when you when you come upstairs, has a proscenium that faces uh, 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 this is is for approximately 85 students. And looking down and framed by this, uh, uh, looking south and framed by this uh, um, uh, um, uh, transom here, uh, you can see the whole profile of Manhattan, which is. Uh, what the what the school is based on. I mean, it's all uh, city college is is the first uh, uh, tertiary education institutions in the island uh, of Manhattan. <clears throat> um, uh, the second project I want to show you is something that is is also uh, uh, very recently finished. It's a project that sort of uh, mixes up these two dimensions between. Uh, urban design and architecture, to what extent uh, the mission of a building is also the, the creation of public realm or the completion of public realm or the enhancement of it, which is a preoccupation that we have always had. This is uh, um, uh, Brooklyn College, and, and from the very beginning, this, uh, uh, this place was uh, uh, famous for the landscape design. This is turn of the, of the 19th century, there's a wonderful garden in here and an important historic building at the end, but it was completely capped by a series of buildings in here. There is a, an important avenue that runs through Brooklyn here, which actually created a division between the two campuses and the master plan was to generate um, a, a new quad uh, uh, in front of the old quad, such that uh, the extension uh, could actually be perceived over the street. Um, and the, 
solution for that was uh, the, the, uh, the deployment of a building which is a combination of a student center and a uh, physical education facility. And this is something uh, that we uh, uh, encourage the, the college to consider. Now that they had two projects uh, uh, which were completely uh, unrelated to them. Uh, and that in order to uh, sort of give um, a, a destination point coming into the West Quad that you needed not only just uh, the phys ed students and the faculty of the department, but also the activity that could maintain the life of this new courtyard, this new uh, quad, uh, 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 at a very high level. So we intersected in between this program the, um, the, um, uh, the, the students' facilities, the students' organization and the registrar. So there is a, a pool of traffic across the street and into the new quad, uh, uh, which is maximized by this programmatic decision. And then the, the other topic was that uh, the building not only face and shape this space, but also kind of give, gave new validity to the playing fields at the back, and that's probably easier to see it in section. Uh, it's a very inexpensive building, uh, is, uh, and, and yet uh, uh, with very simple materials, uh, uh, we were able to, uh, you know, present both a a uh, a, a very uh, formal uh, relationship to the new quad, which uh, was already designed in the original master plan, and at the same time create a certain imbalance on the on the uh, composition of the facade to provide an, uh, an, uh, a stair that not only links the student organization's levels, but also uses this sort of kind of build wall as a running track for, for, for students at the top. So there is even more connectivity between the two programs. And the section uh, works like this. This is the quad, all the uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, support for the uh, for the place and 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 a very large storage for the university was maintained underneath the quad. Um, there is a series of uh, uh, field houses here with um, um, uh, different kinds of indoor sports. I mean, uh, and uh, a covered uh, running track and a swimming pool, uh, which is covered by this massive. Uh, uh, trusses that rest on on this single beam and open directly into the viewing of the um, uh, uh, of the fields. Um, so all the multi-purpose rooms are sort of kind of uh, stitched together into a, a, a into this space uh, with the the faculty for the 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 phys ed department is located in between the trusses, so they have a look directly into the playing fields. And, and at the top, there are uh, more uh, classrooms and more uh, faculty offices. And at the top of everything, through this stair that links everything uh, uh, together, um, at the top there is this uh, running track. Um, so these are some images of, uh, uh, of the building that, as I said before, I mean, is a it, it tends to be a, a contextual, but at the same time, the sort of break the typical box quality of the of the buildings of this particular period, the sort of kind of neo uh, Victorian that was so typical uh, at that time in in the architecture of New York. So the theme of the structure, the theme of how the structure brings light into the spaces and at the same time organizes the architecture, is something that we have always. Uh, 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 maintain as a light motif, motif, and what we do. These are the trusses resting uh, directly into this beam, and in between the trusses, there are, there's always an office for the faculty. And these are the rooms from <coughs> from inside, with the with the faculty members' offices in, in between the trusses. The trusses also um, uh, deploy the air conditioning and the lighting for each of these uh, rooms. Um, uh, this is a project which uh, uh, is, uh, you know, was hit by the uh, by the uh, recession. Uh, uh, we went as far as uh, preparing construction documents and negotiated uh, uh, the construction loan, and then uh, is is in suspense now. But it is a 
a very interesting project because it's smuck into this new area in New York, the, the Chelsea area, which is uh, west downtown between 19 and uh, approximately 25th or 26th Street, uh, which has become this incredible concentration of art galleries and, uh, and, and consequently the, the, the traffic has increased enormously. And a, a group of uh, artists put together a, co a cooperative to build this hotel uh, in a very interesting site which uh, is part of the development of the High Line that you might have uh, heard or seen, which is a wonderful elevated park um, that is uh, partially developed now up until this point, and the ambition is that this thing will continue uh, with the new development of the Penn Yards on the west side of Manhattan. But the site is pretty uh, 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 spectacular. It's, this is uh, um, uh, 11th Avenue, uh, which is a thoroughfare and a wonderful, uh, uh, very active nowadays. And all of this is the, the basic concentration of the, of the art galleries and the building is right in the center. So the site is a very difficult site. There is a storage here for DHL, which is uh, 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 very blind and big and boxy. And, and the idea, and this is the high line, and the idea was the creation of an internal street, I mean, to create a path or a mule, something of that nature, that could actually be activated by the hall, uh, the entry lobby of the hotel, and a series of art galleries and restaurants that could actually link uh, um, uh, 22nd and 23rd Street uh, in a control environment. Um, uh, now the core for the, the hotel is placed in this part of the site and the core for it is located uh, directly with a view to the river uh, and serving the hotel always with a series of bridges that uh, uh, intersect the viewing of the units and this is a very typical uh, 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 hotel plan, but with rooms that are very generous and very um, and, and 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 rather large. Um, and this is the, the the view of the building with the core uh, 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 looking to the river. This is the uh, um, the um, uh, uh, Hudson River. And so when you're coming up in the elevator, you see the view. Then you take one of these bridges and you come to your room. And it's a combination of two materials, a, 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 a corn stainless steel uh, series of, uh, of uh, uh, planes that are of a sort of monumental uh, dimension. I mean, you know, each of these objects is, uh, is one single piece of steel. Um, and then a series of uh, louvers, fenestrations that fall vertically uh, that are controlled either by this building management system or uh, by the occupants um, that give you both privacy and the capacity to open the 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 uh, the, the window of the of the room a hundred percent and and uh, and this is the level at which the um, uh, uh, the highlight develops and so from here you enter also to a series of restaurants which are in here and you can see in this area the street penetrating into that uh, uh, into that space uh, this uh, uh, party wall existed and what we did in here in this sort of narrow slot of, of, of land is to create a, um, a, a very important staircase that leads you down to a screening room that um, that uh, uh, is is a very promising facility uh, uh, for 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 the passengers and also the uh, the guests and the and the community in general. So it is all part of a it's almost like a community project. These are some views of the space. I mean, how in this sort of kind of very narrow interstitial space, the interest of a view of a metropolitan character could be maintained. Um, and, uh, uh, and I, I hope uh, it will uh, uh, it will uh, go back to to uh, where it should be uh, uh, if uh, if the recession <coughs> sort of uh, uh, allows it, which I have my doubts, but uh, that's my negativity. Um, I wanted to show you these two projects together because, again. 
go back to this question of master planning and architecture. There are two very different projects in two different cities uh, that suffer by the same problems, essentially. One is an aversion to density as a principle. The second one is a very active and intense public process. And the third is this uh, 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 you know, thorn almost on the on the uh, uh, on the ability uh, of architecture to develop uh, in in context in the city, which is the lack of ideological consistency on the preservation community. So, <coughs> um, both of them are uh, are in industrial sites recovered uh, uh, for potential future development. Both of them have. Uh, infra industrial infrastructure in it, which in some cases is uh, a really completely undistinguished, and in some, in both cases, I should say, that have been elevated to uh, major icons in the in the skyline of both cities, uh, and both of these sites are in the wrong side of the river. Uh, that is to say, uh, uh, as you probably know. All the government of the city of New York is located in Manhattan. Uh, Brooklyn is sort of like a independent country almost, even though it's all managed by the same people. Um, and uh, uh, but the imbalance in terms of income average and uh, development cost and and uh, um, 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 preservation uh, criteria is very very strong and. It's the same with London, uh, uh, the Chelsea side, the North uh, Bank is the bank where all the rich people live, and the South Bank was where all the industry was. Um, these things have changed. The uh, interesting part of that is that in both cases, the, the two sites are incredibly penalized by two, and I hope you wouldn't re repeat this, to absolutely horrific buildings that, uh, that are, as you can see, very tall and one may say incredibly uh, iconic. And it's iconic for everybody that lives on this side of the river and completely hated by everybody that lives next to the buildings. And, <laughs> and that's a, that, that, that was one of the, the, the levels and the modalities of complain, as you well know, between the Brits and the people in Brooklyn is, are very, very different. But <coughs> the core of the problem is the same, that uh, uh, it, it, this, which is the South Bank, this is the Battersea Power Station, um, uh, which is a building that looks as if it was from the 17th century, but it's a building that was finished in 1942, 45, um, uh, and that uh, is a complete concoction of different engineering solutions um, uh, uh, controlled by uh, Sir Scott, uh, uh, that, that was the architect of choice, is the, is the architect that designed the typical uh, telephone booth in, in London, the red one that has this sort of little thing at the top. And this poor guy has to deal with a building that in his, its first phase, it was not divided like this, but divided like that. So for 15 years, this building was nothing other than this half of it. And then the technology evolved, and he had in mind this notion that this thing had to be symmetrical and you know, imposing and all the rest of it. Uh, but the technology changed, and this half that looks the same isn't the same. And so the structural uh, uh, design changed the whole configuration of the, of the encasement. Uh, you know, was rethought, and so the building is sort of completely an in-between situation. It happens to be, uh, I mean, for whoever likes these uh, uh, statistics, I, I don't know exactly how, how they actually figure this out, but they say it's the largest uh, brick building in the world. I mean, as if that would make it good, right? 